and let's be seated so after me say building yourself for the work many years ago when we were on Legon campus we went for what we call missions when we went for missions there were some ladies who went with us missions that were going to win souls in villages and when we went we were there after one night when we were in our boys quarters where the boys sleep when we heard noise outside where we sleep a lot of noise after a crusade outreach and they were bringing some of our own people as if our people needed deliverance the ladies they were bringing them they were screaming they were shouting i'm afraid i am i'm afraid what is happening to me hey hey i won't do again it was a serious thing that was happening not knowing that so i went out with with some of the team people i if i my memory serves my pastor she was also part so we went out when we went to meet them these were ladies who had gone out on the mission field to cast out devils it looked like the devil was rather casting them out <laughs> and for some reason they were not themselves anymore they, they went normal but they came back and they were not normal they were not built for the work for all you know some of them didn't know their identity in the lord some of them did not know what christ had made them the authority in christ some of them probably were even living in sin and so the enemy used it to his advantage you see that and so and some of them didn't know their way about casting out devils they were not trained for the work they were not built such a go and just preach and go don't cast out devils <laughs> they were not trained they were not built so when the devil was just carrying them they couldn't contain it as far as I, back as jesus i was casting out devils i was trained for it to a devil and say come out and they will go out i'm telling you the truth jesus amen and amen so these were not trained so when they came what did we do i just laid hands on them every power tormenting them get out they came to preach the gospel not to carry a demon home and they fell flat quietly the demon left and i began to counsel them on how they must go about these things how they must grow and build themselves for the work because even the calmness with which you minister when a case a dangerous case comes it shows your build up because somebody will come hey hey papa hey if you also do hey we oui. no it means to start with you cannot even solve the case you are, you are fearing their fear because you are not built you are not built you are not solid you are not established you are not cut out you are not trained for the job and that's why building yourself for the work of god building yourself for evangelism building yourself to get results in soul winning becomes very crucial receive the grace to build yourself in the bible there are people who built themselves first example is moses mention his name in, in exodus chapter 2 from the verse number 10 to 14 the bible says something Exodus chapter 2, verse number 10, to the verse number 14. Amen and amen. amen. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew Moses out of the water. So Moses was drawn out of 11. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, and Moses was grown, the Bible said that, he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew. Hebrew means an Israelite of one of his brethren. Twelve. And he looked this way and that way. Was it sha sha? And when he saw that no man was looking, or when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian, killed him, and hid him in the sand. When I read the scripture, I always laugh because I remember when one mason was hiding cement in the sand one day when building for my father when I was small. 
the mason was hiding the sand. So when we close and everybody goes, it's like he's bathing and washing himself. When everybody has left, he will take the two bags of cement and he will go. So when I read the scripture and I see that they were buried, Moses was hiding a dead body in the sand. I remember the mason who was hiding cement in the sand many, many years ago when I was small. And there was one, one other, I mean, as he's a carpenter, he hid nail in his hair. The, the hair was bushy. Nobody, and they're going, we go and shave your eyes. Oh, no. Like, he was hiding nail. Every day he hit about four or five. <laughs> Continue for me. And when he went out the second day, so the first day he killed and hid in the sand. The second day, Moses went out, and behold, two men of the Israelites, of the Hebrews, they were fighting together. They strove together. And he said to, to him, that did the wrong. Oh, wherefore smitest thou your fellow? Why are you fighting? And he said, one of them, the one who did the wrong, he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Did you see that? The first day, Moses looked left and right. And he saw that nobody was looking and he killed. And yet the next day, they knew. So when you think that you are doing something and nobody is seeing, somebody is seeing. <laughs> because he was trained as a prince of Egypt and he knew when the coast was clear and yet somebody said hey do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian and Moses feared and said Kai surely this thing is known I thought I had hidden the dead body but it looks like people know that's when Moses fled into the wilderness but look at the statement that was said in verse 14 this verse and he said who made thee those three words are very striking. Who made thee? That means you have not been made. You have not been brought up. You have not been built up for this work. You have not been trained. Who made you? you know, nobody has made you. Nobody has trained you. Nobody has trained you and given you charge over us. So we, we cannot submit your authority. We cannot hear you. Yes, we are fighting, but you are not the one to judge our case. Who made you? A judge one. who made you as you are sitting here you are going out on evangelism you are going out who made you you must be made the word made means you must be trained it means you must be built up that's why god gave apostles prophet for the building up of the saints for the equipping catatismos <laughs> glory to jesus who made you so look at two people and tell them who made you who made you who made you in isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to 5 so the first example example of building yourself for the work moses was not built for the work even though one day you will deliver the israelites but you must be built for it you cannot just go and be doing things you must be built and trained for it and god trained him in the wilderness let's look at a guy called isaiah in isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 to 5 isaiah 6 verse 1 to 5 in the year that king uziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up and his train filled the head this scripture prayer prayer warriors the way they have used, used the scripture to eat hey isaiah 6 1 now uziah woo, you know isaiah woo, uziah woo. but really it was just marking a timeline uziah was not the bad one Am I communicating here? It was marking a timeline, you see, that this thing happened during the death of Uziah. So, it, for example, this happened in Nkrumah's time. It was just a, a marking of a timeline. But prayer warriors have you chopped, they have eaten, they have chopped through this verse. Bah. <laughs> Any Uziah in your life? <laughs> They will die. <laughs> in, because the Bible, the Bible says something. That in the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, Uzziah and Isaiah. <laughs> I saw the Lord. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so you see, sometimes you must know scripture very, very well. In the year that Kinusia died, I saw. Oh, yeah, you can use it. You see, once you are using it for prayer purposes, you can use it to also at least chop a little. But we, we have to also show you the real 
thing that was happening uh, as to why they brought it to mark the calendar, the year, the timing. Amen. And he said he saw the Lord and he saw the glory of God and he said it, it, it filled the whole temple verse 2 and above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with two or twin he covered his face with twin twin means two Gentile four. twin he covered his feet and with twin he did fly continue for me and one carried on one cried sorry unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory so isaiah has prophesied from chapter one to chapter five chapter six he has seen the glory of god and he's seen the seraphims and they're crying holy 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 and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke five verse five amen and amen then said i woe is me for I am undone. Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Let's continue. Continue. And he laid it on my mouth, and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged continue also i heard the voice of the lord saying let's all read from whom ready go whom shall i send and who will go for us then i said here am i send me this is serious ah isaiah please verse, verse eight isaiah has been prophesying from chapter one to chapter five and it's now that god is asking who will i send so what were you doing? No, the guy has been prophesying from Isaiah chapter 1 to Isaiah chapter 5. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with you, was in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 10. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. And yet, God was still looking for somebody to send. Now, there's a key. When Isaiah now encountered the glory of God there was a, there was a thing he said say woe is me for I am undone when you are cooking food and you say it's undone or you are baking and you say it is undone what does that mean it's not fully baked that means the prophet was not fully trained was not fully baked that means you can be doing one or two things when you are not fully trained God is still looking for another person who is trained to send Listen, and that's why if you are going for the camps, it must be important to you. It is part of your full baking. It is part of your food. Anybody who does not like camps does not like training. And anybody who does not like training does not like being made. Anybody who does not like being made is someone who is not fully baked. And if you are not fully baked, your generation cannot taste of you. Hallelujah. Now, the next was also the disciples. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew 4, 19. The disciples. Please, number one was who? Example of someone who should be built for the work. Who was built for the work? Who? Moses. Number two was who? Isaiah. And number three is who? The disciples. Number one was who? Moses, number two was who? Isaiah, number three is who? The disciples. Yeah. Let's look at it. Let's all read Matthew 4, 19. Ready? Go. And he said unto them, uh -huh. Follow me and I will. Again, follow me and I will. 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 Who made you a judge of us? Who made you? You must be made. And Jesus Christ said, it is when you follow me that you are made. He said, follow me. And what will I do? I will make you. Yeah. The reason why many people in different churches are half-baked Christians, they are not hard followers. And so they are not made. He said, follow me and I will make you. Yesterday, something very, very interesting happened um, after um, um, Hebron prayer meeting. 
Because after the prayer meeting, I do Bible school. And when I was doing the Bible school and I was lecturing them and I was teaching them, somebody asked a question and it was very, very interesting and very, very funny. Should I tell you that? Are you sure? You know, because at the end, the person came to me and knelt down. Papa, please pray for me. Tomorrow, can you lay your hands on me? What was it? The guy said that he came for the Easter convention from the Hebron branch, a gentleman, and he said that he brought a soul during the evening service from the area. Because I've taught them to win souls too. So during the AGM, he went around and he's a gentleman and he saw a lady. And he talked to the lady and the lady said she will not come. She's not ready. And she said, he said that, oh, it will help you. Let's go. The lady was still proving stubborn. He said that he took money and bought food for the lady. The lady said she's angry. Bought food for the lady. The lady now agreed to follow her. And the lady came. When the lady came, during the healing time, the lady was not well. And so the lady, she, she, he told the lady, can you go for it? The lady said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. He said, he pushed the lady, go for it. And the lady came for it. And I laid hands. The lady fell under the power. The lady couldn't even control herself. Fell under the power and all that. So later, I said, the lady called her. And the lady said, I will never, 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 never step into the church again. <laughs> and he told the lady why the lady said I'm a witch and the lady said that the moment I got to the door the kind of fire that me and I had to turn back but you were pushing me there no, this is, I didn't know anything about it he said that, and the, and the man will be singing, the pastor will be singing, and it's like that, that you cannot even enter the building. You know, that's why AGM worship it is. That I, told, I, tell, I normally tell you that's the most intense part. But the worship is the intense part. I'm telling you. And lady said that, so she was uncomfortable throughout the meeting. He said, and what sport it is that you, you pushed me forward. For the man of God to lay hands on me. He said, you, you, you have spoiled my life. He said, you, you, I, I don't know what to do to myself again. The witchcraft has spoiled. Said, he said, now, I don't know what to do again to myself. Then the, the lady said that, because really I wanted to marry you. <laughs> I've been a gentleman, this was Papa. The lady said that she's a water spirit. Oh yes, that's what the lady told him. He said, but still I want to marry you. So the gentleman was afraid. He said, Papa, so in that case, what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? And I'm sure I'm not making home. In that case, what do we do? And I told him that, look, that's not what happened to you. But he, he knelt down. He just said, Papa, you just touch me. At least for clearance, just touch me. <laughs> and for, that was his faith. So I had to intentionally touch him. Even though I told him nothing will happen to him. Just so that his faith will be made whole. And his faith will make him whole. Because just quite normally told them, your faith has made you whole. So some are really according to their faith. Amen and amen. amen. And yet the lady told him that he goes to one of these churches where the, she, she, I can't mention name. And it's very comfortable in that negative church, that negative place. And yet the lady was afraid of this place. I'm telling you. I did not even know. So when the lady came and they said that she wanted prayer, I just laid hands on her and continued ministering to the other people. You see that? So when you come to AGM or you come to service here, when there's no service and you even come and sit here, something happens to you. Yeah. No, yesterday, I will never forget the way we laughed at the Bible school at the Hebron place. We laughed 
You could see the fear in the gentleman's eyes. I wanted to ask, hey, Ali, only look at that. Because the way he was afraid. <laughs> my mother told my daughter. <laughs> and I said, nothing will happen to you. Yeah. No, so can you imagine that as I'm standing here, cool like that, a witch is afraid of this place. Not even me, the atmosphere. And by the time they encounter me, that one by the grace of God is another that level. Yeah. Yeah. One day I was telling Pastor Michael that I really want to come and sleep here in this church. Because I saw the way that the, the boys here were enjoying. I said, Can you guys enjoy? No. I really want to come. <laughs> Because the glory of God is here. That's why every time I tell Mabel that the third port will never be full. Yeah. Please be seated. Sometimes people can tell me, I had a dream that this your son was dead, this your daughter is dead. I don't mind those dreams. I don't care about those dreams. As long as that son or daughter of mine comes to meetings, I don't, I don't need to pray for the person. That's all. You are sitting under our meetings by the grace of God. No, 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 no. Just keep coming. That's all. Let any witch try. They can't. By the grace of God and by the mercies of God. So when you give me, in fact, when somebody tells me a dream or a vision about a person, and a person does not normally come to church, I'm afraid. That person is not serious. I'm afraid a little. You see, certain prophecies you cannot even give to somebody who has sat under my feet for a long time. It's true. You know it can't even work. Or when somebody has a dream and gives, tell, tells you and you, you gives, gives you the dream and you come and tell I know that, okay, this, when I measure you, you are, you are, you are trained to a point. I know this, it, it holds no water. The person is just looking at what the enemy would have loved to do, which he cannot do. And that's why you have, you, you've realized, I normally tell you what God wants to do. And yesterday, the Lord told me it's a season of testimonies. Somebody, you are missing it. You must receive it right here. It's your season of testimonies. What am I doing? I'm in my office. This is the altar. I'm in my office now. I'm in a season. I started praying, and the Lord told me that. We take it. Receive it. Please be seated. Yeah. Now, look at the story I just told you. What does it mean? It means that the gentleman was not made. Because that was his first time in the Bible school. Yesterday night, or yesterday, was his first time coming for training, ever. Do you know that when we are preaching generally, and when we are training you, we have separated your training, do you know it's different? It's not the same. In this church, those who are separated and trained, they are different from the congregation. Totally different. Totally. Oh, I'm telling you under God. Totally. No, the disciples and the multitudes, they are not the same. <laughs> Jesus preached to the multitudes, but he focused on few disciples and built them. Built them. Built them. Trained them raise them for example when I pick Pastor Michael or I pick Pastor Odenke or any of the pastors or lady pastors you cannot compare members to them no matter what you do when I have a case of deliverance I won't bring it to you I'll take it to either Mike or Odenke maybe I'll serious me I'm here not To you and even among the pastor and lady pastors i know the one to send a particular case to yeah because everybody in the way they have received the training up to you cannot compare bartholomew to Peter, James, and John.
So when there's a deliverance case or maybe a casting out devil to do, every believer can cast out devils. But there are certain realms. <laughs> I wish I would have encouraged you to say everybody can handle it. I wished. But if you build yourself, yes, you can. All you need to do is to build yourself. Please drop the message translation tonight. tonight. Please be seated. Sons, be seated. Daughter, be seated. Go to Hosea 7, verse 8 to 10. If that is this message translation. Hosea chapter 7, verse 8 to 10. Hosea chapter number 7, verse number 8 to 10. Amen and amen. Are we here? Message is on the board. Good. Ephraim mingles with the pagans. A Christian mingling with unbelievers. He said, Ephraim mingles with the pagans, dissipating himself. Why is that? Everybody read the next sentence. Ready to go? Ephraim is what? How big? So when you see an unbeliever, a believer, the person is a believer, but wants to be worldly a little, the person is half baked. A believer, but they wish that you leave them to do a little of what they like, which is worldly, but will make them happy. The person is half baked. Many people are in churches, including this church, but they are not fully baked. But free we are saying, so you know, you need to tell you, you need to tell The Bible says, the Bible says, Lot pitched his tent near Sodom. He knew Sodom and Gomorrah were evil places. But he, when he was building his tent, he built it closer. He said, I'm not inside it, oh, I'm closer. But when the angels found, found him, they, he was now inside. <laughs> when you are half baked, very soon we'll find you fully in the world. You will start losing interest in the things of the spirit. Because you have refused to be baked, to be trained. To be made seven things you need number one let's go to matthew 4 19 to 22 then i write the seven things you need then we close matthew 4 19 to 22 that is king james and he saith unto them follow me and i will make you fishers of men verse 20 and they and they straightway left their nets and followed him verse 21 good and going on from thence he saw other two brethren james the son of zebedee and john his brother in a ship with zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them 22 and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him amen and amen number one so from this passage you are picking the things needed number one decisiveness and readiness if you are not decisive to follow and be made, forget it. You'll be in the church for 40 years and it'll be like you are still a new baby, a newborn baby. Number one, decisiveness and readiness. Oftentimes, even among those I'm training, I've seen certain of them with decisiveness and readiness more than the others. More than the others. I've seen some people who have decisiveness is like I'm ready to leave everything and follow to be made man of God what do you have for us we are ready to follow we are decisive we are ready there's a people to you call them for training and they are running away they are not decisive they are not ready do you know there's some people who have done membership class for four years they've still not finished membership class do you know there's some people who have done stewards class for five years now for the time we're down there till now and we have gone here they are still doing discipleship class those are people who have been stewards for two years three years and they don't have a home cell there's no decisiveness there's no they are refusing to grow no decisiveness and readiness so a, a boss a master can pick people and say i want to train these people 
but you see in few of them decisiveness and readiness boy when you see it you know it now even if you are sitting here i know those who are decisive that today i'm receiving something from my father and from my pastor and i'm ready you know do you know pastor Denke, do you know that most people they've quoted the scripture um concerning the berean church the berean people the berean people were not even christians So have you read that scripture before? Have you heard that word Berea before? Some of you, you don't even know Berea. <laughs> In the book of Acts. Hey, what is that word? Acts. Berea, <laughs> Berea. Oh, my son, Cosmos, is in the book of Acts. <laughs> Let me laugh a little before we go. does that tell you previously they were unbelievers so after they searched and said many of them began to believe also of honorable women which were Greeks and of men not a few so these Berean people that people the Berean Christian they were these were not even Christians they were unbelievers yet even unbelievers had readiness for the word and yet believers don't have it some believers don't have readiness when the word of god is going on many christians are not ready many christians are distracted pastor Steve was preaching about how to profit for fully from the word many people have heard that scripture and yet they are still having losses when the word is going on because they lack readiness many people are not ready to be trained so peter when Jesus Christ said follow me and i'll make you the guy had to be decisive and leave the net if you are not decisive you cannot leave the net you'll be looking here and looking there you'll be you will go in here and there and that lack of decisiveness eh, it can kill your ministry it can kill the work you can do for god it will stop you from being built that here and there kind of life as i move as, as i was moving here and there search for that scripture let's go to that scripture quickly there's a scripture like that in the book of kings First Kings twenty thirty nine to forty. You will never be here and there. Let's all read. Ready, go. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king. Everybody read some, huh? And he said, "Please be ready, ready, and decisive, and ready, go." Thy servant.
here and there he said he was gone and the king of israel said unto him so shall thy judgment be thyself has decided it so when you are not decisive you have decided your own fate please be seated in the presence of the lord decisiveness and readiness number two number two recognition of the anointed recognition of the anointed recognition of the anointed number three an ability to leave things behind an ability to leave things behind number two recognition of the anointed number three an ability to leave things behind number four am i too fast number three an ability to leave things behind number four an ability to just follow an ability to just follow I said number two, recognition of the anointed. Number three, an ability to leave things behind. Number four, an ability to just follow. Number five, an ability to persuade others to follow. Rebenko, how are you? Good. An ability to persuade others to just follow. Francis, are you writing? Can you write? Can you write? Are you able to read and write? So why are you not writing? Good. Good. Amen and amen. amen. If you can write and you don't write, it's like you can't write. So when you come to church, training, if you want to be trained, be ready. Bible, notebook, pen. Bible, iPad, writing pad, whatever you used to write, very important. It shows you have decisiveness and readiness. Ask somebody, where is your notebook and your pen or your iPad? Where, where is it? Amen and amen. Number five, are you writing number five? Number six, which is the last but one? A readiness to learn and improve yourself. A readiness to learn and what? improve yourself a readiness to learn and improve yourself number seven a readiness to do a readiness to do whether you have going to, to to do before or not you must have a readiness what to do must be action oriented and all these points are from matthew 4 19 to 22 matthew 4 19 to 22 amen and amen he said unto them follow me and i'll make you fishes of men peter was decisive and ready and they straightway you see decisive and ready they didn't have to go and gather anything decisive and ready and then ready Straight they left their nest and followed him. I said number two, recognition of the anointed. That means you must recognize. You know, I'll never forget that word, recognize. Especially the way I'm saying it. You must recognize. Do you know why I'll never forget it? One day, last year, when we were in Singapore, Bishop Duck took us to shopping. And we were going, in fact, we were going round the shop and we would buy this, buy that. Then we'll, we will join him again. We will be walking in the shop. It was like a big mall. And whilst we were walking, I was immediately by his side at that time. We were walking and we saw a particular shop. He said, oh, the, the name they've written on this shop is my hometown in Switzerland. I said, really? He said, yes. Shop fashion. He said, that's where I come from in Switzerland. That's where my mother comes from. So my mother is from Switzerland. And I said, wow. And he said that the case in Africa is very, very deep. <laughs> he said, because how can you explain it? 
that we have everything that we can use to develop our nation and yet we can't develop it he said and it's the same not only ghana it's everywhere in africa a little portion of the capital city is nice the rest is not nice he said but when you go to europe everywhere is nice and everywhere every it, it, it duplicates in every country in europe and he said and that's how churches too are few people will listen and they too are developing i said so why is that then he said that because many people don't recognize the anointed he said they must have an ability to recognize i said yes <laughs> he said you must recognize this is my anointed man and i'm ready to follow him an ability to recognize peter looked left and right said no 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 i've been fishing all my life this is the man to follow he recognized this is the man that that you know, is my destiny and yes that was peter's destiny an ability to what i didn't hear you, and you must do your hands and say an ability to do what recognize never forget it that this man is the man for me and i'm going to follow him oh yes and peter peter started following peter started following. what was the third point so when you recognize leaving things behind becomes very easy when elisha recognized that elijah is the man to follow he left the he bent and killed all his 12 yoke of oxen an ability to recognize will lead to an ability to leave things to follow oh yeah one day when Prophet Oko came he was with me in the office and one of my sons who was a very serious businessman came to the office you see he just came to the office and the prophet told him that when you were with Papa and you were very close to Papa, I was telling this, my son, you were very close to Papa. You see, you were getting a lot of money. He said, it's true. He said, have you seen when you distanced yourself after some time, you have no money? He said, it's true. He said that when you were close to him, there's a prosperity around him that was always coming around you. He said, Mommy, what did he say? Angels, even when you ask. Take the mic. I think that you remember things more. Happy birthday. Same to you, Papa. Do you know we have a new gem baby girl? Wow. Yeah. 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 So, Papa, he said that your angels, the angels that work for no, you. No, listen. Are you, having, are you having readiness to listen? He said that because of his closeness, after a while, his angels become familiar with him. Yes, he said whose angels your angels become my angels become familiar with, with him, him because he has been around me yes so yes after a while if just in case he's not around you he's somewhere and he needs you yeah but you are not available physically physically your angels move to help they recognize him. his need because he has been working around me yes but when yeah. he distanced himself or when you distance the angels himself, also forgot him hallelujah your angels out yes. of sight so he was explaining prophetically that no, this is prophetism. He was explaining that the angels, because he has been working around me, the angels know him. I, mean, I didn't even see things that way. It was something that, it was like, okay, wow. It was a wow, wow moment. I knew it is very important to work around the man of God. Is that when I understood? I said, ah, mommy, that's why those who work around me, they begin to get blessed. They begin to, anybody who works closely around me, they begin to do well. I didn't understand. Yeah. No. Not so. He said that when he decided, he said, now it's like he's on his own. I said, really? And he confirmed, he said, it is true. Totally true. It's true. Totally true. He said, so now, learn sense. Is I've learned sense, wisdom, understanding, <laughs> know how, experience, <laughs> knowledge, everything. It's true. Because, you see, I couldn't really explain why people who are around me and are faithful to serving eventually begin to, they begin to do well. Oh, wow. That's why I tell all those around me, 
you learn to listen to me well. That's, that's when you do well. Don't think for me. Let me think. Then you fit yourself into my thinking. <laughs> One day somebody around me said that, normally I thought that, I said, don't think. I've told you that this is what I want things to be done. Listen, you learn to listen to you, you will know me. Amen and amen. Yes. Do it this way. Do it that way. Do it early this way. Do it quick this way. When you're able to know me, see, the, the angels that work with me by the grace of God, that the Holy Ghost has identified for me, all of the things that they work with speed. One day, I didn't even want something to be done with speed. By the time I realized, the thing was done. I said, Lord, the death has become very fast. He said, that's how I work with you. God said, I put that nature inside you. Let me pray for somebody because it looks like we're there. You will never have delays in the name of Jesus. I command speed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please you sit in the presence of the Lord. Recognize. Then you will be able to leave things and follow. You're like you are going to the camp. You may leave a car at home. Leave your house. You will leave your house. <laughs> of course, your house cannot follow you. And be there. You're ready to leave things, leave people. Sometimes leave family and follow. It comes with it. Peter, Peter left family. Say we have left all and followed. There's one, one lady, she came to tell me that when her husband follows me, he said that the husband does very, very well. Yes. So her husband was celebrating his birthday. He said that, Papa, give me this birthday gift. Let my husband follow you intensively. I said, it depends on him. As for me, I'm there. It, 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 it's a depending something. Because one of the things I am, I'm very, very gentle. Those who follow me, follow me of their own volition. Oh, yes. And when they come to, even when people are around me, those who ask me questions, they get more from me. You know, in Ghana, they have been trained that when you are around an authority figure or anointed person or a big man or somebody, be quietly there. It's not right. It's not right. I have sons and daughters who ask me questions. And after they ask me questions, they get a lot of answers from the word of God. And their, their perspective on what God wants begin to increase. And their blessings begin to grow. Yeah. It's true. And my mommy comes to me and she's asking me because I see that she's writing. Because a man of God is a well. He has a lot of things. When he's talking, when he's with you, he doesn't know where to start from, so he's quiet. Until you provoke it. So when you think that, I am there with you. You don't, you don't, you don't teach me anything. You don't tell me. I'm teaching you now. But those who get the disciples, the disciples will ask Jesus Christ, what does this one mean? What can this one mean? What should this one mean? Then Jesus Christ says, oh, are you also with that understanding? Okay, let me explain. Then he will still tell you God to explain. So when you are with the anointed, you get more from him. I remember someone came to visit me yesterday. And we spoke, spoke. And when we finished speaking, I was just sitting there, ready to close the meeting and let him go. They said, Papa, I have four things. They said, Papa, number one, this. Not knowing it was a big issue that he wanted me to solve for him. So I called mommy. Mommy came. Mommy sat there. And I said, Mommy, how can this thing happen to him? He's my son. I said, kneel down. He knelt down. I said, lift your hands. I began to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. I said, Mommy, pray. Mommy prayed. I prayed in tongues. I prayed again. I said, Mommy, pray. Prayed in tongues. Then after that, I laid hands on him. I said, this week, you must hear news. Because in fact, what he told me, it angered me in the spirit. Normally, I'm waiting for that. So when he was, was talking to me, I was just building up the anger. I will ask him a question that will anger me more. 
when he gives me the answer I said what did it do to you then you see that the anger is building it's building it's building I was boiling I was boiling all of a sudden I got up when I got up I said this week you are hearing from them mommy when did we hear the news he came yesterday around um, 12 and then by evening time by 6 he had sent us a message that it had been issued approved it had been approved yes yeah. boiling please sit and pray Lord I said I cancel delay from your life please be seated auntie when you come and you are saying something say it in a way that I will learn what they did it to my son my daughter you see you must provoke something your car can the dead the heck papa anytime you do it it's fine no let me be provoked and apart from any issue when you come ask questions Papa, how can I build a cell? How can I build a church? How can I build a ministry? One person who asks questions, one of my sons, Odenke, anytime he comes around me, he's asking me plenty of questions. In fact, plenty. Pastor James will also be asking me, Papa, when our people vacate, what will I do? Because when they vacate, some of them are at home, it's like they cannot come. And I give him the key. You know, imagine if you are not asked. Because when school vacates, church vacates on Legon campus. But I showed him what to do. <laughs> Training. Recognize. And you should leave all and follow. Please be serious. Leave or follow. Ask questions. Yes, I've taught you a lot. But still, there are things, more things to know especially when you have practiced what has been taught and it's not working you must ask certain questions baby and i've tried this and then this way you ask in a humble way humble full way that you will get an answer why, 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 how can i get this thing done looks like I, I, i've wrapped my head around it but it's not what can i say so okay okay okay, okay. do you know that sometimes i will not answer you only according to what i know but by the holy spirit from the wells of the spirit. Which number are we in? Number what? Four. What was number four? To just follow. I'll teach you that one at the camp. What was number five? To persuade others. I'll teach you at the camp. What was the next number? Ah. Huh? At the camp, Katatitwa's camp. <laughs> what was the number? number where, where are we now? Number what? Okay, that's what number seven. What is number seven? To do. Camp. <laughs> Stand to your feet and let's pray. <laughs> oh, it's true, it's true. Stand to your feet. You are closing. So, everybody, make sure you come for the Katatitwa's camp. Lift up your two hands. Catatismos. Wave your hands and begin to thank the Lord.